Good Wednesday and welcome back. Thanks for being here as we're two days into the month of June, a day as we were expecting filled with some clouds and showers, no thunderstorms at least over the immediate viewing area or the newsroom in downtown Sagersville today, but some light scattered showers that we're going to continue to see and probably see intensify into your Thursday, uh, then start to wane into your Thursday night and Friday. I have in my latest update, a very much improving weekend forecast for you that will feel much more like summer and will be filled with far less clouds and showers. In fact, zero at this point. Yesterday, that wasn't the case. A happy weather update for you in just a few moments. And in some other happy news tonight, oh, you know, things starting to return. We're closer to normal than we were in a very successful and anticipated program is coming back for Operation Unite after, of course, like everything else in this world, a hiatus last year. And the good news is it's coming to McGoffin County this Monday. Kids, any of you out there school age, anyone out there who has school age children, stick around. We'll tell you which UK star is going to be here in Sagersville next week and what you need to know about the single day event. We'll get to that in just a few seconds. A host of other news and information, just a couple of things from the state before I go any further on the state level at least. Uh, not good news. It's not surprising news, but not good news nonetheless. After a lot of analysis and data gathering, a subcommittee in regards to economic development and tourism has put together some figures, and the Secretary of the Tourism Arts and Heritage Cabinet, Mike Berry, and others say that in all, Kentucky's tourism industry uh, looks to be losing about 2 to $3 billion in totality because of the pandemic. Of course, you know, there were a lot of parts of tourism, I'll use that word as it is, but uh, state parks and a lot of other facilities were able to stay open for the most part, not through the entirety, but weren't hit quite as hard. But when you look at venues and you look at motels and you look at everything that goes along with that and the restaurants and um, all the hospitality that goes along with it, two to three billion dollars is a major, major loss and it would be catastrophic for some. They did, however, uh, end the meeting on a little bit of a positive note, saying that all the information still points to things getting better very quickly here in Kentucky, and that Kentucky being considered a safe and fun and interesting destination will hopefully make it first on a lot of people's list to see as soon as they can get out and have the time to do so. Kentucky's Attorney General is suing CVS Pharmacies and their distributor, which is owned by the same people, mind you, for their part in the opioid crisis, saying that between the years of 2006 and 2014, CVS Pharmacies just in Kentucky purchased from their own, own distributors more than 150 million units, doses of oxycodone and hydrocodone, mainly from its own distribution centers, but as well some others not owned by the company. All of that added up to over 6% of the total doses in the Commonwealth during that time span. And that uh, those weren't the worst years. 15, 2015 also saw another big increase in drug overdose deaths here in Kentucky. The Attorney General adds his lawsuit against CVS to those against Indo, Teva Pharmaceuticals, and the Walgreens Corporation as well. Governor Bashir today made an announcement, $127 million worth of an announcement. That much money headed to local school districts across parts of Kentucky to fund construction and renovation projects. It's part of his Better Kentucky plan that he announced yesterday, $250 million thereof going towards water infrastructure out of $103 billion in totality. Um, we know that as for schools, uh, several are going to receive millions of dollars in all. Like I said, $127 million. Uh, the largest of that appears to be $14 million to Breckenridge and Carter counties each. But Martin County, uh, in uh, Martin, Inez Elementary School, $10,660,000. And the Duff Allen Central Elementary School in Floyd County will get just under $11 million. Uh, those appear to be the two closest and only real eastern Kentucky counties in our surrounding area. 
that are going to be set to get millions of dollars for new schools or renovation thereof. I'll be right back. We'll begin local headlines after this. I'm excited to talk about Jared Polson coming to the McGuffin County High School Monday. In recognition and honor of all of your achievements, especially your extraordinary senior year, Salyersville National Bank wants to salute the class of 2021 and assure you that wherever your next horizon leads you, we're here to help you save for your dreams with student, business, personal checking, and more. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2021 from Salyersville National Bank. There's no missing that this is the new McFarland and Tinker Law Office location on the Mountain Parkway in the former Farm Bureau building in Sagersville, just like there's no denying that their nearly 60 years of legal experience has won their clients millions and millions of dollars in disability, auto accident, and wrongful death cases. It's where your case matters to you and to us. McFarland and Tinker, also Griffey approved. Jason Zimmerman at Highlands ARH, the healthcare system of Appalachia. Operation Unite, if I am correct, and I think I am, has been holding its shoot hoops, not drugs, basketball camps since 2006. Regional camps that they have over various sites in Kentucky, and there weren't any held. Like everything else, last year it got canceled because of COVID. But there's good news tonight. The good news is there's a lot of good news. Jared Polson is now taking Jeff Shepard's place, who helped kick all of this off many, many years ago. And he, along with Operation Unite officials and others, will be in two eastern Kentucky counties next week, two Kentucky counties, one of them, McGoffin County, on Monday. And that is a, that's a big deal. This is a great opportunity for our kids, and it was a good opportunity for me as well to talk to Del Morton of Operation Unite, who uh, I have known for a number of years, who has informed me about a number of events just like the basketball camp, who, like everyone else, is thrilled to see it happening, and happening here in McGoffin County for all of our school-aged children next Monday afternoon. Dale, I have to say it's really good to talk to you. We've corresponded over a number of years, over a number of projects. Good to have you with us in the studio today, sir. Well, it's, it's good to be actually back. I mean, Unite and the whole world has kind of been on shutdown since March of last year. And uh, Unite's just starting to get its, its programs back out into the public. And uh, this will be one of the first ones that we've done since uh, they've opened things back up. Well, we're certainly glad for that because Unite over the years has done a lot of wonderful things, of course, and a lot of those wonderful things have been centered around our kids and our youth. Uh, we're here to talk about, of course, Monday being a big day here in McGoffin County for a lot of our kids. Before we go into the, the specifics on, on the camp and who's going to be here, that's another big part of it, obviously. You know, this camp has been a big success, not just for Unite over the years, but for our young people, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Um, you know, of course, Kentucky is a basketball state. And so uh, when uh, UK star Jeff Shepard decided that uh, he could use his talent to help Unite, um, we began the Shoot Hoops basketball camps back in 2006. And like everything else, um, you know, he, he's moved on to a few things, but he brought us a, a new star, one of the rising uh, talents on the team, Jared Paulson, um, who has his own uh, championship ring behind him. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the, the, the camps are, are presented by individuals of high quality and high skill levels. Go ahead, if you don't mind, give us a little bit of a rundown of when, and, and I know we obviously know the where is going to be here in McGoffin County. You guys are doing a couple of camps in the next week or so, but let's talk about McGoffin County. Yeah, McGoffin um, uh, is, of course, we tried to bring it there last year, so we're, we're making up for that this year. But it's a free basketball skills camp um, from 4 to 7 p.m. at McGoffin County High School. Um, there may be a little bit of changes because of the requirements we still have to follow um, with the, the restrictions, but um, uh, it's open to any school-age youth 
typically that's you know kindergarten on up um, and what they'll do is they'll go through some fundamental basketball skills um, with Jared Polson they will um, learn how the skills that they're learning on the basketball court apply to their own life whether it's academically whether it's in clubs or other organizations that they're they may be part of all of the all of the fundamental skills that make a good basketball player are going to be the same skills that um, uh, apply here it's Monday from 4 till 7 at the McGonville County High School. And parents and families, it's not just for the kids. You get to stay and watch the full three hours. And not only that, you are invited and, and urged to attend a camp yourself for the first few moments while the kids are getting registered and ready to go. Several years ago, um, Unite... Uh, decided that you know you had all these parents and grandparents and guardians that were bringing their their sons and daughters to the camp and we thought that this would be a great opportunity to maybe speak with them and give them a little information about a trending drug topic and that's been very successful we've had over 2500 parents and guardians attend these awareness sessions and this year we're going to be talking about stimulants, um, which if, if parents aren't familiar with how big of a problem stimulants are, uh, they should take the 10 or 15 minutes at the beginning of camp and participate in, in that program. And they don't miss anything because the first part of the, the basketball camp with the kids is more organizational than it is anything else. So while they're getting organized on the court, we take the parents in and, and give them um, some very useful information, and uh, then they come back out and, and can watch the watch their sons and daughters uh, go through the skill drills. And, and just real quickly before we go, unless you need to add something else, I want to make sure that we reiterate that it is free and that there's no registration required. All they need to do is show up Monday morning at the high school, right? Uh, Monday afternoon, yes. Oh. I could have looked at the time. Four to seven. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that part again then. Okay. <laughs> so, so unless unless you've got something else to add, and we'll, we'll certainly give you all the time, I want to make sure we, we do mention a couple of things, and that is uh, the cost as well as the, the registration process or, or lack thereof, so to speak. How easy is it for every kid to be there? Uh, it, it's extremely easy. They, they don't have to, they don't have to register. Um, uh, we would encourage them, though, to uh, when they come to uh, have closed-toed shoes. Um, we have had kids try to do the camps in flip-flops and things, and that doesn't work real well. But uh, just come prepared just to have fun, learn a little bit of uh, skill, um, meet uh, meet Jerry Polson, and and there'll be there'll be coaches, adult coaches that are volunteering to help them through their drills, and we just offer all kind of positive reinforcement role models to to the kids that come the camp again is completely free water and food is provided participants are all entered into a drawing they're giving away two basketball goals at the end of the camp you don't have to pre-register you just got to show up i would advise you to show up few minutes before four they'll register everyone from about four to four fifteen but if you're there a few moments early you can of course get registered as we're expecting hopefully a nice big crowd now for just a little more encouragement if you need it and a little more information here's the promo they sent as well talking about the free basketball kids get and of course the really neat thing that uh, Dale just mentioned in regards to the parent camp, the brief one uh, at the beginning of the whole event, I thought that's a marvelous idea. They've been doing that since 2012 or so, and some other good information to know ahead of next Monday. Shoot Hoops, Not Drugs is a camp put on by Operation Unite. Um, and so it's a basketball camp, which we go into different communities around the south and eastern parts of Kentucky. Basically, we just kind of get a big crowd because of the basketball. Obviously, the BBN is huge around here. But it's really more of a life skills camp, you know, teaching the, the ethics of working hard, uh, persevering, 
staying away from drugs. Like the ultimate message is these kids have purpose and, and they have a bright future ahead, but a lot of times you can get sidetracked with drugs and different things. So we wanna just encourage a positive message. We have a lot of camp counselors that are helping me out with the camps and we're just trying to encourage the kids telling them that they have a future and to stay away from drugs and all those things that are not going to allow them to get to those points. So that's what shoothoops.drugs is. So the parents actually have a program that, that runs about 15 or 20 minutes at the, at the start of camp and um, it's just education on how to basically relay that message to your kids and, and keep that message on them. You know, it's one thing to, to come for three hours and do a camp and teach them these messages, but to have their parents alongside of them and to support them and just to encourage them with the same message that we're teaching today, but someone in their life that's around them every day to just encourage that message and keep them away. Again, just telling them that they do have a purpose in life, that God made them for a reason. Um, and, and just to, you, you know, you get to go around different communities and we have so many volunteers everywhere I've done these camps. You have people from the community. So we get to meet those people, they help out. We have all these kinds of sponsors and companies that are into this mission and want to send this message to the kids. So it's kind of just a big community wide thing that we go into different places and um, just teach the kids that lesson. Like they have a future and, and we don't want to let drugs or anything like that harm that future. Another cool thing about Shoot Hoops Not Drugs is each camper gets to go home with a, a brand new basketball, um, they get a free t-shirt, they get to eat um, some hot dogs and some chips, they get free dinner, and then we actually even have a drawing um, for two winners, that the, the, the winners of the drawing get free basketball goals, so they get to go home with a lot of cool things, um, just another really cool part about this Operation Unite Camp. At the end of the day, we just want to come here and have a good time with the kids. We have coaches and, and counselors that come here and, and volunteer and, and spend their time um, working with the kids. We want to tell them that they have a purpose in life and God made them for a reason. Um, we do know that there are some things in life like drugs that can kind of put, put their goals um, to the side and not allow them to reach their goals and we want to kind of stop that. Um, again, they, they have a future and we just want to be a positive light um, with the kids in their communities, teach them life skills, hard work, perseverance, all those things. Um, and we feel like if we can do that in three hours, that's a really good camp. Summer is here, and the deal on the iPhone 12 mini just got even hotter at Appalachian Wireless. The iPhone 12 mini comes with massive features and is the perfect pocket size. Best of all, Appalachian Wireless is offering the iPhone 12 mini for just one penny with a two-year contract. Good things do come in small packages, and it's the iPhone 12 mini on the region's best network. But don't wait. This deal won't last long. We are you. We are Appalachian Wireless. Track Phone has brand new deals, brand new plans, and a brand new line of phones, and Fraser's Prater Drugstore has them all, like iPhone 6S's prepaid for only $114.99. We dare you to find it anywhere any cheaper. Yes, $114.99. So stay connected, stay in touch with major savings on all new Track Phone plans and devices at Sagersville's Fraser's Prater Drugstore. Spring is always the time for new beginnings and redecorating or at least adding a few new favorite pieces to your home decor. And the Seasonal Shop has just finished resetting their entire home decor section with all new merchandise. It's all there. Classic favorites, new trends, and the unusual pieces that can set your decor apart from everyone else. Farmhouse, timeless blue and white pottery, natural woods, beaded accents, bohemian, bees, lemons, copper, white pottery, and equestrian, it's all there. And it's all there there with local delivery, layaway, and curbside pickup. It's the only place like it, the Seasonal Shop in downtown Sagersville. Speedies in Sagersville invites you to come by and get the very best prices on everything from Coke and Pepsi products, two 15-packs, just $8.88. L81, buy the six-pack, $3.29, or get a full case, $12.50. Six bucks for two gallons of milk, mix or match and they absolutely guarantee they have the cheapest tobacco around. The best prices on cigarettes buy the carton and snuff buy the roll, and the more you buy, the more you save. At Speedy's in Sagersville, the very best place to feed your appetite and fill your tank. Guaranteed. 
Welcome to East Kentucky's premier vape and CBD shop, offering all natural tobacco alternatives and everything vape and smoke shop related. Everything you're looking for and everything you're not. Best quality, best prices, best service. Come to Appalachian Smoke Shop for all your tobacco alternatives and accessories, as well as products like CBD, Kratom, and Legal THC that people are telling us they're using to treat pain, anxiety, depression, difficulty sleeping, and lack of energy, as well as just for overall wellness. Make it your one stop, Appalachian Smoke Shop. Let's go to our calendar right now, some more headlines, and of course, an improving weekend weather forecast in just a few moments. A calendar which starts off with a very happy birthday for, I hope, a very happy 10-year-old young man. Let's everybody say happy birthday, Will. That is Mr. Will Mead turning 10 today. Will, you knew this was coming. <laughs> I've been wishing this young man a happy birthday most of his birthdays. For mom and dad and Holly Kate and Granny and Pa and Margie and Uncle Neil, happy, happy, happy 10th birthday to Mr. Will Mead. Happy, happy, happy birthday to you. From there, a reminder about a really great car show and event coming up at the Desi Scott Children's Home uh, off the parkway there on 15. This is, I'm going to try still to get to somebody maybe tomorrow to promote Saturday's event, but it's a car, truck, bike, off road show with food, music, silent auction. Uh, free regist registration is $15, free setup for vendors, and free dash plaques for the first 25 vehicles that get there. If you have any questions, call Billy Smith at 398 7000. That is registration 10 o'clock this Saturday morning until 2. And trophies and awards, of course, will be given out this Saturday, 10 till 3, at the Desi Scott Children's Home. More on that, I promise, tomorrow or Friday. The Water Into Wine Food Pantry wants me to tell everyone of their new summer hours that actually started today for their Wednesday food pantry for the rest of the summer. Wednesdays, 8 until 10.30. You need to be in the parking lot by 10 o'clock. And then their senior commodity day is the third Thursday of each month, 12.30 till 3. And when you've got an announcement or birthday or anniversary and you want everyone to know about it, this is how you, this is how you tell me so I can tell them. Going on to funeral announcements brought to you by the McGoffin County Funeral Home. A reminder of services to be held in the morning beginning at 11 from the Bethlehem to Calvary Apostolic Church in honor of 47-year-old James Allen Holland of Sagersville who passed away Friday, the son of the late James Orville Holland and Brenda Joyce Shell Bradley. He survived by his sons Lewis and Allen Holland, daughters Tasha and Ashley Holland, brothers Robert and Donald Holland, sisters Beatrice Moore and Eunice Gibson, Susan Holland, Carrie Little, and Mary Scott. Services again tomorrow morning beginning at 11. Parkway Pharmacy, as always, promises the quickest service with the very best care and prices and to always have someone there to talk to when you have a question. With three pharmacists, curbside, drive through and call-ahead service. Parkway Pharmacy in Sagersville, 349-4400. Where you can always talk to a pharmacist when you need one. Just click on ConleyTire.net and you can shop for tires, find out more about services, brands, wheels, rims, their free coffee, free Wi-Fi, and free local shuttle service, and of course the latest and greatest current offers and specials like how right now you can get up to $150 back on a set of good years. That's ConleyTire.net or you can always stop by in Staffordsville or give them a call at 297-2424. It's time to play the Lee's Famous Recipe Daily Lunch Special Game, where behind curtain number one, we have our super tasty country fried steak sandwich. And behind curtain number two, our famous chicken sandwich with lettuce, pickle, and mayo. And you can get either one of those on a bun or a biscuit. But wait, behind curtain number three, our extra famous footlong with homemade chili. And all three come served with our famous hand dip potato wedges and a drink. Monday through Friday for lunch from 11 to 2 for just 5 bucks plus tax. You're a winner either way you go at your Sagersville Lee's Famous Recipe. 
Go with All Pro and you'll always get a perfectly finished project backed by decades of experience and thousands of satisfied customers. Always with the best prices on everything from small to large remodels, bathrooms to kitchens to entire homes, or turnkey new construction on everything from garages, homes to retail space. And seamless gutters too. And All Pro still offers 0% financing for up to 18 months and long term low interest rates on those big projects. For an estimate, call this family owned business today. Prestonsburg Tourism is hosting a watch party at the MAC this coming Monday starting at 8 30. The finale will be seen that night. Prior to that will be the semi-final round of Food Network's Best Baker in America, which if you haven't been watching, features a Prestonsburg native. Indeed, next Monday night, starting at 8.30 at the MAC, come and enjoy up on the big screen as they celebrate and support one of their own who happens to be this massively talented pastry chef from Floyd County, Currently from Louisville, Miss Jackie Joseph, who has worked as the executive pastry chef in the likes of the Brown Hotel, yeah, that Brown Hotel, and the Louisville Omni, and she is among those still left competing for the best baker in America prize of $25,000 and perhaps even more importantly, the title that goes along with it. She grew up here in Eastern Kentucky and uh, actually blew everyone away. Her, get this, their very first um, competition was making the Kentucky May Day pie cake you know, the, the cake with two pies in it, a little bourbon flavor, I think that goes along with it. Yeah, she nailed it, of course, and she's been nailing every competition since. She graduated Sullivan. Um, she actually has had the honor and privilege of baking for the Winter Olympics athletes in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, she's been on another series, Chopped. You've heard of that one, too. Uh, did very well and is actually the process of opening, opening her own J.J. Bakes and Company, a custom bakery that will specialize in everything from desserts to pastries to wedding cakes. It was an eight-episode bank baking competition that comes to a head with a winner to be announced this Monday night. You can watch, of course, on the Food Network at home or go join the party at the MAC. And I'm already excited about the opportunity to maybe taste one of Joseph's creations out of Louisville sometime in the future. Sounds exciting and very, very sweet. With that said, here's your Licking Valley RACC outlook. Uh, pretty sweet for your weekend. Some clouds and showers between now and then, but an improving forecast for your Saturday and Sunday. For the rest of tonight, more of the same, mostly cloudy skies and about a 60% chance of some showers and storms and a low of around 61. Any additional rainfall tonight might add up to a tenth of an inch on average, a thunderstorm that could pop up, of course, could put down more, but on average, just some more light and scattered showers possible for the rest of your evening. Tomorrow, we're still into the 70s. We're also going to see the, the worst day weather-wise of the bunch with a 90% chance of showers and storms. Winds coming out of the southwest for your Thursday, anywhere up to 18 miles per hour at times. Maybe a half inch of rain uh, tomorrow with only another tenth or a quarter of an inch tomorrow night to add it to it. But a chance, a better chance of some showers, definitely thunderstorms as well tomorrow for your Thursday. Again, 77, 58 for your high and low. And then we start to work our way out of this pattern on your Friday a little slowly at start. A chance of showers and thunderstorms are possible afternoon, only to the tune of about a 30% chance. But otherwise, mostly sunny and enough sunshine to perk us back up to about 80 degrees. So look for the sun and 80 degrees on your Friday and a lingering chance of some showers and thunderstorms that might hold on to, say, 20% by Friday night. Good news is that compared to 24 hours ago, uh, Friday night looks to be the end of it. Shower chances are going to be null and void and gone by the weekend. Uh, so says you'll see your Saturday forecast where we're seeing sunny and 85, a low of 60, 
and clear skies and mostly clear skies that night. So a beautiful first half to your weekend and even nicer and warmer still for the latter. 88 and sunny on your Saturday, partly cloudy skies that night with a low of 63. You will notice some consistency from there on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, mostly sunny skies and mid-80s across the board. Also, you'll see the shower chances only 20 to 40% at their peak, but still there throughout those first three days of next week as well. Not too bad at all. And certainly a beautiful weekend that will leave the Memorial Day weekend weather-wise behind in its dust. That's a wrap for this Wednesday. I'll be talking about tomorrow's edition of the Sagersville Independent when I see you next time. If you don't have one by then, I'll be giving you a glimpse as to what's in it, as well as a host of other news and information that you're only going to see here. Good night, and thank you for watching.